the title of the message, Let Me Serve That I May Lead, may sound like a contradiction to some. How is it that one can lead and still be a servant? Some may have the idea that if one is a leader, he is the one who is giving the orders and holding everybody else accountable while he does nothing. That is not the definition of a leader, is it? This morning, we want to pay close attention to what the Bible says about servant leadership. A true leader is one who's not a dictator or a tyrant. A true leader is one who has learned how to serve. And I want to say this about the beloved brethren who've been placed before you this morning. They have demonstrated servant leadership for a long, long time. And who's the ultimate example to follow with regard to servant leadership? His name is Jesus Christ, the greatest leader the world has ever known. And our Lord Jesus Christ was likewise a servant. No better place to see that demonstrated than in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John. You know the setting. John 13 is the first chapter in a series of chapters that takes place in an upper room, a place that had been selected by Christ Jesus for a final meeting with his disciples before his impending crucifixion. Jesus has planned for this particular moment. It's going to be a special occasion where he instructs his disciples, where he tells them about how much he loves them, where he instills confidence in them, and likewise hope. Despite all that's about to happen, this is part of God's plan. And Jesus makes that clear to these disciples. It's interesting that the servant leader Jesus is more interested in his disciples at this particular time than he is himself. Here he is about to undergo the enormous pain and suffering of, of that trial and crucifixion. And yet he's concerned about his disciples. He wants to, to give them admonition and encouragement. He wants to give them power to keep on keeping on, even in the midst of what is about to happen. And Jesus does this despite the fact that he knows that not only one named Judas Iscariot would betray him, but before that night was over, the scriptures would say all would flee from him. And yet he loves them and he desires their association. The servant leader. The text says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, just pause right there. Timing was everything in the plan of Jesus. We sometimes say that time means nothing to God, but, but God is not confined to time, and yet time is, timing is everything with him. He did create time for man's benefit, and in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ came to this earth, did he not? Galatians 4, 4. And so while it's true that a day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day, timing is still everything in God's plan. And the text says here that Jesus' hour was come. Did you know every one of us have a particular moment where we have to make big decisions? Some decisions we had no, no control over them. We were born. We had no control over that. There was the hour when we were born, and yet another hour we had complete control over our decision for Christ, didn't we? And I reflect back upon my life. There was that moment when I was born, and there was the moment when I made a decision for Christ and was baptized into Him. There was that decision when I decided to give my heart and life to preaching the gospel, the decision to get married, and so we all have these hours of decision, these special moments when we have to rise to a particular occasion. And our Lord Jesus Christ came to this critical hour. The text says he knew his hour was come and his hour that had come upon him was that which had been planned throughout eternity past. He would now offer himself as a sacrifice for mankind. He knew his hour. 
Every one of us is faced with a moment where we have to rise to the occasion. Will we accept that moment? When your hour comes, will you be ready for it? With regard to leadership, leadership is not something you seek after. It comes to you. And you have to be willing to accept it when it comes your way. Jesus' hour had come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. The hour has come where his work is almost finished, but he still has something left to do. His hour has come. The wise man in the book of Ecclesiastes would remind us to everything there is a season, time and a purpose to everything under heaven. Time to be born, a time to die, and a time to do a whole lot in between. The hour of decision comes upon us. The hour where we make our move, we find ourselves where we have to make critical decisions with regard to our relationship with Christ. So what will it be? Here in this first verse, the text says that Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he was to depart out of this world unto the Father, and notice, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. There's another thing you learn about the servant leader is that he is wrapped up in a cause that's bigger than himself. It's the selfish person who's out for personal gain. But the person who truly lives and who's happy is caught up in something much bigger than himself. Are you caught up in Christ? Doesn't get any bigger than that. You caught up in his cause? Jesus taught us that his business was a people business. And sometimes I've heard, I've heard individuals say they wanted to preach but didn't want to have anything to do with people. It's going to be difficult to preach if you don't have anything to do with people. Somebody says the church is great. It's just all the people you have to worry about, right? Well, the church is composed of people, people redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And our Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth because of people. And it says here about the 12 with whom he had an intimate association. He loved them unto the end. He loved them to the fullest extent possible, didn't he? He loved those who would betray him and deny him. But that's the nature of of the servant leader. He's going to do all that he can to help in a particular situation. He rises to the occasion because people are depending upon him. And Jesus understands there are those who are depending upon him. So he loved his own, which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. The church of our Lord is composed of people. And therefore, we need servant leaders who encourage us as a people, who inspire us, who will help us to rise to new heights like never before. That's, that's Jesus. But whenever something good is happening, you can be sure the devil wants to interrupt what's going on. And therefore, in verse 2, supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, our Lord Jesus was aware of that. The servant leader is aware when others are not aware. The servant leader understands what's going on behind the scenes when others may not. And though this particular individual is not one who is looking for confrontation, he's not afraid of it either especially when it comes to protecting the sheep of the flock. Remember what Paul would say to the Ephesian elders, take heed unto yourselves and to the brethren. Take heed unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers and feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And he goes on to say, you beware of wolves, those who appear as if they're friendly, but they're not. Wolves will come in not sparing the flock. And who's going to protect the flock? The one who's alert to danger. The one who could do harm. And therefore, the servant leader is one who is looking out for the enemy. He's looking out for the one who, is, who could do damage. He's looking out for the one who could bring harm. And he says, not to my flock, it will not be done. And so we find Jesus, the servant leader, ever aware that there were enemies among them. 
Jesus knowing, the text says, that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God. The servant leader knows who he is. He uh, is comfortable with who he is. Here is a person who is, who is not puffed up and proud. He already knows who he is in Christ. He does not have to behave that way. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus came from the Father and he was returning to the Father. And despite Jesus knowing who he was, the very Prince of Glory, he was the humble servant of God. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I want to tell you this about Jesus Christ. He did not suffer from low self-esteem. No. One who is genuinely humble, is not suffering from low self-esteem. He knows who he is. Jesus does not think less of himself. He just thinks of himself less, and therefore he'll go to the cross, he'll die. That's what the servant leader does. He doesn't think lowly of himself, just less of himself. He serves, and as a servant, he becomes a leader. Jesus knew who he was. If you want somebody to lead you, that person's got to have a vision. That person's got to have an understanding of who he is, who, what he wants to accomplish, and he wants to bring others along in accomplishing that mission. Because there are a lot of people out here who want to follow if they have the right kind of leadership, but not everybody can lead. But the servant leader, he instills, he instills confidence in his brethren to follow. And so the text then says, Jesus riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. And after that he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. It's interesting to me that Jesus planned all of this. Jesus is an organizer. He's the one who's made preparation for this meal. And uh, did something happen in the process of planning that he forgot about someone being there to watch the disciples' feet? Well, wait a minute. The Lord remembered the room. The Lord remembered the meal. The Lord even remembered that he needed a basin and water and a towel. He did not forget to have a slave there to wash others' feet. Because our Lord Jesus Christ always planned ahead. He knew what he was going to do. And he knew what he was going to do on this occasion. The leader is able by example to show what has to be done. Here is the ultimate in servant leadership. He poureth water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel therewith he was girded we probably would have the same reaction that Peter had. Jesus washing our feet? That doesn't seem right. We should wash his feet. Oh, but Jesus has to teach us a lesson because while many of us would say, I would do this for Jesus, Jesus says, but would you do that for your fellow man? Would you do that for the less fortunate? Would you do that for the one who's unable? Would you be willing to do that? I have been in hospital rooms before when I saw individuals that I knew were Christians of means taking care of the poorest among us. For one reason, they were servant leaders. These individuals didn't hire somebody out to do it. They didn't forget what needed to be done. They just went as servant leaders and did what was expected of Christ. Some years ago, we honored a couple for their missionary efforts. In fact, this couple was known for the great missionary work they had done in Southeast Asia, leading the way for others to follow behind and not only establish new churches, but, but to... Um, work with the brethren already that were established and keep them strong. 
This couple was influential, very much worthy of us having a dinner in their honor just to show our appreciation. The night of that dinner, they were the focus of our, uh, of our appreciation. It was all about them. Some years later, after that missionary had died, during a lectureship week, I was over in the fellowship hall, seated across the table from the wife, the widow, and on her, on her lapel, she wore a little name tag, and it said her name, and underneath it, kitchen worker. <laughs> she was just as comfortable being a kitchen worker as she was being the noted wife of a missionary. That's servant leadership that Jesus exemplified. He was down on his knees doing what others didn't want to do. You see, no one was here to wash the disciples' feet. Perhaps Peter thought about washing his own feet, but he said, as soon as I do that, John will want me to wash his feet, right? And I'm not about to do that. So nobody's doing what ought to be done. You've got to remember, this is not sitting down at a table. This would be in reclining fashion, and so it would be very important for sanitary reasons, for the feet to be washed and for the comfort that would bring and the relaxation. But Jesus, the Prince of Glory, the Son of God, He got down on His knees with that towel and with the water, washed His disciples' feet. He did what others weren't willing to do. That's the servant leader. He marks the way. He shows how it's done. And Jesus in responding to Peter, has an interesting statement. Peter says unto the Lord, Do you wash my feet? And Jesus said, What I do, you don't understand now, but you will hereafter. The servant leader among God's people understands some things that maybe the rest of us don't always understand. He's got a vision of where he wants to go. And here's what he wants to do more than anything else. He wants to take the people of God up to a new level where they've never been before. That's what servant leadership is all about. I'm going to show you how to lead by showing you how to serve. And you may not understand what I'm doing right now, but eventually you will. When you accomplish tasks for the Lord that you never, ever thought possible, you see, that's when the servant leader can say it was worth it all. He marks the way. Peter says, I don't understand this. I can't let you wash my, my feet. And Jesus said, what I do, you don't understand now. You will after. Peter says, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus says, if I don't, you'll have no part with me. You see, the servant leader must have those who follow. And Jesus had those who followed. If you have anything to do with me, Peter, you'll recognize what I'm doing. And not only will you allow me to do this on your behalf, you will do it to others. Well, Peter then says, Lord, don't just wash my feet, then give me a complete bath. <laughs> he says, if, if, if that's what you're talking about, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And here's where you find the servant leader is not given to extremes. Peter's going from one extreme to another, isn't he? <laughs> You're not going to wash my feet. Then wash all of me, Lord. No, there's some balance to all of this. You see, Peter, you don't need a bath. Jesus says, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. You don't need to have your whole body washed. You just need your feet washed. Most of us as Christians, we can say this, we don't need to have a complete bathing, but we do need our feet washed from time to time, don't we? And Jesus then went on to say that there was one who's not clean among them. And there again, the servant leader recognizes the one who's not faithful to what they're doing. He knew who would betray him. And therefore said he, you're not all clean. And so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. He's a teacher, isn't he? The servant leader 
is all about teaching others. What Jesus did in this scene was not to establish some church ordinance, was it? But he taught the greatest lesson on humility that could ever be taught. Jesus states, know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord. And what you say is right, that's what I am. But he says, if I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. The servant leader is therefore one who's following the Master. I'm serving the ultimate servant leader. That's what this man says. And as a result of what he is doing, he encourages other to, others to grasp his vision and follow behind. Jesus, the servant leader, says, here's what I've done to you. Now you go out and do the same. And notice the result. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are if you do them. He relates all of this to man's happiness. If you want to find true joy, Jesus says, you learn that from serving. And when you learn to serve, you become a leader among men. And therefore, leadership is not something you grasp but leadership is something that just comes to you before honor is humility, Proverbs 15, 33. And it would be carried out in the life of Jesus and ultimately those who followed him. And Jesus says, when you learn to develop this kind of mentality, servant leadership, happy are you. And those who are happy are at peace and they have unity. And so when we have those who rise to the occasion, who are servant leaders, what do we do? We follow as we follow Christ. And what is the result of all of that? An environment, an atmosphere where there is happiness and joy and peace and unity. That's what happens when all desire to be servants and by being a servant, we learn to lead. Before we can ever learn to lead, however, we've got to learn to serve. And before we can ever learn to serve, we've got to learn to follow, don't we? You willing to follow the servant leader, the Lord Jesus Christ, this morning? He marked the way. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to die. He showed us how to have true life. He showed us what life was all about and gave it meaning. It will not be meaning that's wrapped up in self. It's getting lost in something bigger than self, getting lost in him and his service. And so this morning I ask the one who's not a Christian to follow Jesus by obeying the gospel. As a penitent believer, confess Jesus and be baptized. As a child of God who perhaps has been wandering away from his Lord, you've been selfish in your thinking. It's time to serve again and through your service lead by example. Would you be willing to do that this morning? Step out and come if need be. Recommit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, to his church, to this congregation. We wait for you as together we stand and sing.